What's up, buddy? Hey, bro. Still alive. You are still alive. This is a truthful title to this book. That's true. It's ridiculous, <laughs> but it's true. And it's catchy. That's the whole point. <laughs> Dude, I watched your show the other day, the uh, the television show. What is the television show? Mysterious Creatures. Yes. The new one. And yeah. You, you, were, you were looking for some wolf thing. The red wolf. Yeah. Yeah. But they didn't think it was a red wolf. They thought it was like some mystical a howler. beast. howler. An Ozark like, howler. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Which, you know, I mean, wolves do howl. Yeah. No, that was that was an interesting story. If you look at the timeline from when this cryptid, this this howler popped up, it's right when the red wolf was starting to plummet in its numbers. Mm. And as soon as wolves plummet, they call to each other, right? They howl. Ah, that makes sense. So it's like, oh, we're hearing this thing and the spooky thing that we've seen running around the woods. And it's like, well, yeah, it's wolves trying to find each other. Ah. And it happened to also overlap with when moonshining was like a big deal. So they perpetuated the rumor of the howler to keep people out of the woods. Right. So it like checked all yeah. these boxes to like make up this animal. Is there any cryptid that you find compelling? Just the, I think we talked about it before, the megatherium, the giant ground sloth in Peru. Yeah. I, that's the only one, I mean, depends what you define as cryptid, right? Like I'm not a Bigfoot guy or a Loch Ness monster, but thylacine could be considered a cryptid, right? Yeah, because it was alive. We do have video footage of it, and there's been a bunch of sightings. Yes, but now you have all these Bigfoot-esque people, right? All these sort of tinfoil hat guys who are like, it's here, I've seen it, or whatever. Mm. And so it's like started to fade into this cryptid realm. And I still think that in Papua New Guinea, they, there could be an extant population. Why in Papua New Guinea? So they used to range, we got right into this, this yeah. is great by the way. <laughs> so they used to range from PNG, from New Guinea, all the way down to Tasmania. And then as people came over, they brought dingoes with them, right? And this was like 4,000 years ago. And then the dingoes outcompeted the thylacine in mainland Australia and in theory in Papua New Guinea. But dingoes were never introduced into Tasmania, which is why they thylacine occurred for so much longer in Tasmania. Mm. However, why in Papua New Guinea is because it's such a dramatic habitat. There's so many like valleys and canyons and things that, that dingoes just probably couldn't traverse. That would mean that there's isolated, unexplored areas that the thylacine, because it had evolved there, could still be thriving with, without the competition. Mm. And for people who don't know what a thylacine is, it's a Tasmanian tiger. Yeah. It's a marsupial, it's a, yeah. wolf, crazy jaw, stripes. Crazy jaw. Like, Cra really wild looking. 180 degrees. Yeah. Yeah. Cool looking animal. Like yeah. That thing. So when you talk about, you know, cryptids and blah, 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 I still think that these animals could be out there. Didn't you go looking for one at one point in time? Twice. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> yeah. And did you have any sightings or any, at least, I mean, amongst the people that you were around, or any credible reports? No. Nothing? Well, reports, yes. I mean, there's a guy named Nick Mooney who is like an incredible, that's Benjamin, the last living thylacine in the, in the zoo in Hobart, Tasmania. Um guy named Nick Mooney, who's like a, a state biologist, like world, like renowned naturalist and biologist who has no reason to make this up or anything. And he swears that he saw one in Tasmania about mm. 25 years ago. And he's like, I, you know, he's like, he's, I know every animal in Tasmania. I am a biologist. I work with fish and game or fish, whatever their equivalent is. He's like, I, why would I make this up? He's like, I didn't even tell anybody for a year or two because I like didn't want to be called a kook. Wow. And then he came out with it and sort of began this whole thing. But yeah, I mean, definitely some credible sightings. How would one even do a survey of those areas? If you're, you're talking about like rainforests and tropical jungles and just dense wooded areas, how would one even find what's in there? And for the most part, unexplored, too, especially when it comes to PNG and Western Papua. Um, well, that's the thing. I think that's the barrier to entry, right? Anybody can go to Tasmania, drive down a highway, and be like, oh, I looked and I didn't find it, which is basically what I did. But to get into those places that they could be extant requires helicopter support, refuels, tons of local ground support, you know, like local hunters and tribal people that know the land. And so it's a big, expensive operation to try and get into these places. And then, that's just getting in, then you'd pepper it with trail cameras, baited mm. cameras, you'd do some mm. scent trailing, some sound calling, you know, all these, I mean, you're a hunter, you know yeah. these techniques. Well, it's interesting because we know that mountain lions are real. But most people don't ever see a mountain lion. Right. And a lot of people that live in like these heavily wooded areas don't see mountain lions. Yeah. 
Like, it's hard to find one, and they're everywhere. They live in our cities. Yeah, there's a shit ton of them. Yeah. So you might get lucky and catch one, but the populations are pretty great in terms of, like, like if you're in Colorado or if you're in Utah. I mean, they have a lot of mountain lions, and it's very rare that you see one. Exactly. So imagine if there was a very small population of mountain lions or, you know, or Tasmanian tigers. And, you know, you went looking in a much more wooded area, much yep. more dense environment. Much larger, too. You know, yeah. huge swaths of yeah. unpopulated land. A- and if they were intelligent and cryptic like a mountain lion, which they probably were because they were at the top of the food chain, they know and they choose not to be seen. Like yeah. like P-22, right? The, the mountain lion that mm-hmm. lived in L.A. Like, we have a big photo of them out here. The one with the Hollywood sign? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's a great picture. I just love that photo. Yeah. Um, he He's just dead now. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, just, but did they kill him? Did they euthanize? They euthanized him? him. Yeah, something was wrong with him, right? Like he was badly injured. Or he something? got hit by a car. Mm. Um, I think. Don't quote me on that. But yeah, yeah. It, some injury. I think it was a car strike, and it was an old. He was an old cat as well. So, yeah. Yeah. What do you think of the Orang Pendek? I think it's interesting. Have you ever seen that motorcycle video? Where the guy's on the motorcycle and he yes. sees the little guy run across. Yeah. So that's supposed to be Orang Pendek, right? 